Hi guys, my name is Tito. I make videos on personal finance, saving and investing most of the time, but sometimes I talk about other things like today when I'll be talking about some of the lessons learned from Ebuka's Black Box interview with Don Jazzy. If you haven't seen that interview, you need to watch it. But before you watch it, please like this video by clicking on the like button and subscribe to my channel as well if you're into personal finance videos. But back to Ebuka and the Black Box interview with Don Jazzy. Phenomenal interview. They talked about how Don Jazzy got to where he is today, how he got into music and how he became pretty much the biggest, one of the biggest music producers on the continent of Africa. Phenomenal interview, so many lessons learned. It was more of an educational moment for me than anything else. And I've been mulling on it all day. It came out yesterday, I watched it today. There's so many lessons that I took from it. And here are some of the lessons that I learned from that interview. Now, the first thing I learned from the interview is that self-image is very important. Despite the very humble beginnings that Don Jazzy came from apparently, he never ran himself or his family down. It seemed as, seemed as if throughout his life or for most of his life, he had a healthy self-image. And having a healthy self-image is one of those things that doesn't seem to ever have a disadvantage or a downside because having a healthy self-image determines so much in your life, to be honest. And you really need to check yourself frequently to make sure that you have the right kind of image of yourself. Number two, confidence is key. Throughout the interview, Ebuka kept on trying to ask Don Jazzy that, okay, like, when did you know that producing music was what you wanted to do for a living? And Don Jazzy couldn't seem to give him an answer. It seemed as if for most of his life, he was just going with the flow. So, you know, at this point still, there's still no plan to go into music. Um, well, it's not the music that I was doing. It's yeah. The music that I was you doing, were just doing it's, the live band. With yeah, it was just live band, something. I didn't think about it about... I didn't think about it as going into go and wax record. Yeah. <laughs> you were just doing it, yeah. I was just doing it. And while it may seem like Don Jazzy really didn't know what he wanted to do with his life, he was always confident in his abilities to play music and to make beats. He was extremely confident about that stuff. And it's those abilities and his confidence in those abilities that have you know brought him to where he is today, which goes to show you just how important confidence is no matter what you are doing in life. Number three, sometimes it's other people that will actually tell you or show you who you are or what you're good at. I find it interesting that Don Jazzy never actually set out to be a music producer. He was just a guy in a band who was making beats to aid, you know, the music that his band was playing. It wasn't until later when, you know, he met Cass and maybe a few other people and they wanted him to make beats for them. And they told him that what you're actually doing is producing, you're producing music. And that's ultimately how he found himself in the line of work that he's in today. So sometimes other people help you discover who you are and what you can make money from. Number four, constantly adapt. In the interview, it sounded like Don Jazzy had mastered that keyboard and making beats on that keyboard. And he really didn't see the need to start doing things digitally or making beats on the computer until, you know, push came to shove and he had to produce music for other people and he eventually learned. And that just showed me that you really have to adapt, you know, from old ways of doing things to new ways of doing things because if not, you risk being left behind. Number five, luck actually does play a role in people's success sometimes. As I watched, I kept thinking to myself that, so do you mean that if Soji Solek didn't break up the band, Don Jazzy would still have been in that band and never met the band and they wouldn't have made more hits and created all those songs. Or maybe if um, JJC Skills actually gave Don Jazzy a contract that he liked, Don Jazzy would never have left and, you know, come back to Nigeria to make music with the band. A, a contract was presented at some point that didn't, that didn't indicate if I was some form of partner or not yeah. and it, what the what i was supposed to be getting from it from what i had done in my time in the partnership so to say it makes sense to me so there are certain things that happened in his life that led him to the success that he has today it's a classic case of as one door closes another one opens and it was just very interesting and i think even Ebuka was surprised about how fortuitous certain events were in Don Jazzy's life that actually led him to this phenomenal success that he's made today. The sixth lesson I learned from the interview was know your market, know your audience, know who you're catering to. And this was highlighted in the part where um, Don Jazzy talked about the good music deal that he and the band had, the one they had with Kanye West. 
and how he felt about it. I remember, I remember back then, the gist around town was that, you know, the band was really down for that deal with Kanye West, but, you know, Don Jazzy wasn't feeling it as much. And he kind of explained it in more detail in, this, in the interview. He said that he felt like the American market wasn't necessarily ready for, for his sound. While the Nigerian market was down for it and it was working in Nigeria, the American market, uh, it wasn't just really catching on to it. And he felt like, you know, why am I spending this much time in the US when I could be spending this much time and effort back in Nigeria, catering to the audience and the market that already accepts me and already understands me. And to be honest, while he wanted to, you know, break out to other markets and across the world, I think he wanted to do it on his own terms. And even till today, you don't see Don Jazzy going to the States that much or trying to push things that far outside Africa. He's very focused on Nigeria, a bit on Africa. And it's, I think it's a case of you knowing where your bread is buttered, as they say, and knowing who your audience is and where your market is. So kudos to him for that. Kudos to them for even trying in the first place to break out into a, you know the American market. They tried, perhaps it didn't work the way, the way they thought it would, but kudos to them for trying in the first place. Now, the seventh thing I learned from the interview was constant evolution, particularly in your career. I'm sure you, are, you agree that the Don Jazzy of today is very different from the Don Jazzy of 2006 or 2007 when we first met him. He was just a guy, you know, next to the band back then, but now he's still a music producer, but he's also an influencer. He's a businessman. He's into real estate. He has so many other investments because he's been aware of the environment and the need to evolve. And he's not alone. Other music executives and entertainers around the world, particularly in the West, have also adapt, um, adopted the same mindset. Think of people like Jay-Z or Pharrell or Dr. Dre, who they don't put out music themselves as much now. Instead, now they're promoting other artists, they're promoting other talents, and they're investing in so many other things and they're in at the back end or the business end of music now because the sound has changed and rather than them trying to keep up with the times they can find other things to make money from at the end of the day which is very important especially for entertainers because you can only and athletes as well because you can only entertain or perform or um, chase a ball down a pitch for so many years, you have to diversify and think of what's next. And it's not just entertainers or athletes, it's also everyone in you know other regular lines of work or other regular industries. I'm sure you'll agree that the way things are done now in your industry are very different from how they were done 10 years ago. So the moral of the story is constant evolution for everyone. Now, the next thing I learned from the interview was that partnerships are still incredibly powerful. Looking at the band and Don Jazzy and how they started off together from, you know, what Don Jazzy said in the interview, they came together and they literally took the world by storm. And individually, they're okay. They're both talented guys individually, but when they came together, they changed the game. And it's funny because we probably wouldn't have known who the band, um, sorry, who Don Jazzy was if not for the band. But at the same time, we wouldn't know the band today if Don Jazzy hadn't produced those hits for him. So they kind of worked together to create this incredible era in music. And not to mention that we wouldn't know so many other talents if not for the success of the band and Don Jazzy and Mo Hits and Maven and all that stuff. So many things have come from that successful partnership. And you can't tell the story of Nigerian music or entertainment today without mentioning those two guys. So if you can find the right person to partner with, it could make a world of difference, to be honest. Now, the last thing I learned from the interview is that being a good, straightforward person is still very much in fashion. Don Jassy is probably a billionaire. I mean, watching this interview and from, from some of the things he said, I was putting some numbers together and I was, I was like, this guy is probably a billionaire. It didn't dawn on me until I watched the interview, but the fact is, he seems like a nice guy. He seems like somebody that you can, you know, have a drink with, like somebody who, who has his heart on his sleeve, who tells it like it is. Somebody who, if you do business with him, it's not a situation where you must lose in order for him to win. He sees things as win-win. You'd be hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't like Don Jazzy. He just seems like a very stand-up, likable guy. And that's encouraging because sometimes you feel like you have to be underhanded or nasty or conniving or sneaky 
to make it real big and to become a billionaire or something like that. But Don Jazzy shows that you can actually retain your humanity and your integrity and still make it in life. So that's another lesson that I really learned and that really hit home with me. So that's it guys, those are some of the lessons that I learned from Ibuka's Black Box interview with Don Jazzy. Lessons that I will apply to my career, to my business, to investing, and to life generally. If you learned any lessons from the interview, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Now before you guys, before you go guys, please like this video by clicking on the like button. I would really appreciate it. It would help me, this video, and my channel out as well. Um, I make YouTube videos on personal finance, saving, and investing for young people. Some of my videos are showing on the screen right now. Please feel free to check them out. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. If you want to support me or if you feel like, you know, personal finance videos are your cup of tea, then hit the red subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to part two of Don Jazzy's interview coming out in a few days, I think. But yeah, um, I don't know if I'll do another review, but if you've seen that one too, leave me a comment down below. I will link the part one of the interview in the description box as well. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care.